In the three previous videos, we've taken a look at how to solve first order systems, namely RL circuits, but the same techniques also apply to RC circuits. Now, um, the thing that I want to look at is what is the commonality between all of those solutions? Well, if we look carefully at all three of those uh, different um, example problems and the possible solutions that we have, we see that all of them start at some initial value. And um, that initial value uh, is before, is typically before time equals zero, so at some steady state before time equals zero. Um, we uh, also need to look at some final steady state value, and uh, this is the whole purpose of modeling dynamic systems. We're looking at the change, how a first order system changes from that first steady state value to that new second steady state value or final steady state value. And we see that in first order systems, we have this exponential function that defines the approach uh, from the initial value or the initial steady state to the final steady state. Okay, so let's revisit the um, general first order model. And uh, from all of our solutions, we've seen that um, all of the different uh, circuits and first order systems that we've modeled take on this form right here. Um, and this tau right here is just a constant, and this tau has a special meaning. It's called the time constant of the system. All right, um, and we'll get to a little bit more about what this time constant indicates in a few minutes, but basically it's just whatever constant we get in front of the uh, first order derivative term, and we notice that there's no constant in front of the zeroth order derivative term. So we have to um, rearrange our differential equation so all of the constant terms are in front of the first order differential. And uh, if we can do that, then all of those constants, when they're grouped together, are called the time constant. All right, and then from that, if we can get it into that form, uh, if we do our lambda substitution or look for our eigenvalues of the characteristic equation, we find that the homogeneous solution for this general first order model is um, some unknown constant times e raised to the negative t over that time constant tau. We also have to worry about the um, the particular solution for the step input. So right now, this um, next piece is only valid for step inputs. Um, but if we do have a system where we're going to be looking at sudden changes in the input value, we can find that the particular solution, uh, or the forced response for the step input, is given by just the constant value of that constant force that's applied after time equals zero. So, uh, and we've seen this with uh, several of the first order systems that we've looked at. So, um, combining the homogeneous and the particular solution, we see that uh, we have this, this exponential response plus this constant uh, force that's being added into the system uh, from the step input. Now, if we apply a generic initial condition, that is, uh, we assume that the initial, at time equals zero, the initial condition is this x naught then um, we can apply that initial condition and find that the value of that unknown constant, A, is equal to the initial condition minus the final value or the force that's being applied to the system. So when time is equal to zero, we see that um, this exponential term goes to one, and we're left with x naught minus f plus f, which is the same thing as x naught, or is our initial condition. So that um, that is a true statement. It uh, jives with the an initial condition that we have set up here. As time gets very large, this exponential function um, gets uh, very small or very negative, which means this exponential function goes towards zero, and we're left with only the final steady state value or the final force that was added, uh, the, the constant step input force that's added into the system. All right, so from this, we can see that if we know that we have a first order system, basically, we don't have to go through the differential equation solution any longer. Now that we understand where it comes from, we can completely define the step input response, and note that this is the step input response only, of a first order system, um, as long as uh, we know these three parameters. The initial value of the system, that's the initial condition, the final steady state value of the system, and the time constant. 
Okay, we can find the initial and steady state or final steady state values of the system uh, based on the properties of capacitive elements and inductive elements, namely that capacitors act as open circuits and do not permit instantaneous changes in potential, and inductors do not permit instantaneous changes in the kinetic energy or the current. Um, so from that information and by rearranging the differential equation so that we put it into standard form to find the time constant, if we um, once we find that time constant, the initial value, and the final value, then we can use this generalized solution right here without having to go through the complete differential equation solution. Okay? And the time constant depends upon the system being analyzed. So we have to establish this differential equation model to determine its value. Um, for many of the examples that we've seen, uh, we have seen that R over L or um, R times C is a good uh, value for our time constant. However, um, that's not the case for all systems, so it's going to be uh, beneficial to establish and derive that um, differential equation so that you can figure out exactly what this value, this time constant value is. Alright, the time constant is a defining characteristic for the first order system, and it's a measure of how long it takes the system to reach steady state after a disturbance, after we suddenly change the uh, conditions of the force being applied. Um, it has dimensions of time, and we'll talk about the uh, the more specific meaning of the time constant in the next video.